Mr. Jackson still giving evidence? <coughs> show you paragraph 57 of BCB's statement. It will come up on the screen. And perhaps you can start with 56. You'll see that BCB here is talking about um, the meeting uh, that you spoke about yesterday too. And she says she felt uncomfortable. She could not bring herself to tell the elders everything that had happened. She felt like she was still Bill's victim. And she was so scared of saying anything that would get her or Bill into trouble. And then in 57, she says, I remember that at one point in the meeting, Max said to me, is there anything else you wish to tell us? I remember looking across the room at Bill and saying no. It was already very hard to talk about sex in a room full of men. It was especially hard to talk about what Bill had done to me while he was sitting there in front of me. I didn't feel like it was a safe environment, and I was scared of what the consequences would be if I told the whole truth. Perhaps if the sister who I was comfortable with had been there too, it might have been easier. So, Mr. Jackson, I, I take it you accept that it was very hard for BCB to talk about sex in a room full of men. I do, yes. And it was hard for her to talk in front of Bill, whom, Bill Neal, that is, who, who was her abuser. Yes, I'd say that, as she said, that it would have been very hard. And that it did not feel like a safe environment for her. Yes, I don't know why she would have felt that, because we tried to comfort her. Uh, I just can't remember, remember the scriptures that we used and the way that we spoke, but I would say that we tried to comfort her and to help her. But do you appreciate how, whatever you might have said, it couldn't have been enough in, that, in those circumstances? I'd say that's correct, yes. In circumstances where she has to face a number of men who are her elders in the church, yes. so, including one of whom is the person whom she accuses of having abused her. Yes, yes. And she has to face him. Yes, yes. And then she says, as you saw, that perhaps if a sister who she was comfortable with had been there, it might have been easier. And you suggested yesterday there might be space for that. And we started a discussion about that. Um, and I'd like to take you back to what I showed you just before we finished yesterday, uh, which is in, uh, it's at tab 120, page 90, or ringtail 91 of that document, paragraph 3. <coughs> So now this document, you'll recall, it's the uh, shepherd, the flock of God. And of course, it's the position now, n not back then, uh, but I'm content to discuss what the position is now. And as I showed you yesterday, you see it says that in a judicial hearing procedure, observers should not be present for moral support. And you answered yesterday that you thought that if the accused, not the accuser, but the accused wanted moral support, there may be space for that. But you'll accept that under this, there's no space for the accuser to have someone present for moral support. In that particular paragraph, it demonstrates that or mentions that. But I think in the publication around Chapter 12, it does talk about that we need to take into consideration the person and that we would, uh, you know, really try to help them, and if need be now, certainly have someone there to, to help. I think it was paragraph 18 and 19, I think. So 
that's at um, ringtail 132. See this dealing specifically with child abuse, and there the paragraphs 18 and 19 are. Yes, um, it must have been another one, but um, I know that if need be, then we certainly can have, uh, they can have the one that. Uh, has been abused, they can have someone there, whether a friend, parents, uh, ones of their choice to make them feel comfortable. Well, it, it's not in those paragraphs 18 and 19, you accept that? You accept that? Oh, yes, yeah, sorry, yes, I thought it was there, but it's... And it would be against the paragraph 3 we were looking at earlier, insofar as yes. the judicial hearing is concerned, not so. Yes, yes sorry. Um, These guidelines are published by... Uh, Bethel in Brooklyn. Yes. That's right. Yes. So where it says in paragraph 18 on the screen now, in the last sentence, the branch office will then give direction based on the circumstances involved in each situation. Yes. Would it be your understanding that that's direction within what these rules allow? Yes. And, uh, in other words, the branch office wouldn't have authority to override these rules which are published and distributed from uh, New York. No, but they could include saying that we should give the support, as much support to the victim as, as possible. Yes. Now, what about if it's a, um, if the complainant is a child still at the time that she's complaining, that she raises the allegation, uh, how do you deal with that? In the case 10, um, just trying to think of the chapter, whether it's, um, but there's, again, just the support if it's a child and the parents would be permitted to come there, unless, of course, one is an accuser. It's a little bit different. Um, but again, we try to give them as much support as we can to help them. Well, Mr Jackson, you and... You and other overseers and elders have given evidence or have, it, have in their statements that you receive training from time to time, is that right? And does that training ever cover how you should deal with children who are making complaints of child sexual abuse? I cannot remember exactly when, but I'd say yes, that it does deal with that and appreciating that every situation is different the way that it would be handled. Well, what training specifically on, for example, how to interview a child complainant? We, of course, try to be as kind and considerate, thinking of Bible principles invo involved, how we can be a support to these ones, Again, looking to the publications as well. You accept that it's a specialist area of how to, how to respond to uh, children making allegations of abuse? Yes, we do, and we certainly uh, appreciate that. Um, and even after, we don't discourage if the... If the parents or the individual wants to seek other help through individuals or through, um, uh, depending on the circumstances, qualified people, so, psychiatrists or counsellors. And insofar as the interviewing itself is concerned, uh, you wouldn't, though, be able to give up your role as an elder uh, in conducting an interview to a professional outside of the church, would you? Uh, do you mean 
being involved in the meeting? Yes, interviewing the child. No, that's true. We don't know. Um, but we try to give them as much of support as we can, as we said, either, as I've said, either through an individual who they feel comfortable with. Um, but when the situation is dealt with, we certainly, you know, don't encourage them. But we say to them, if they want to, they can, you know, go to counsellors. Uh, psychiatric help or within the congregation there may be someone that uh, can give them definite help. We can look at um, tab 126 starting on the first page. Make it bigger. So you'll see that this is from World Headquarters in August 2013, mm -hmm. and it's to branch committees, and it's uh, guidelines for branch office service desks. In other words, how branch offices uh, should respond. And then attached to the to the letter um, is some guidelines for branch office service desks. Uh, is this a document you've seen before? Um. It wouldn't typically go to you because you, no. you've not served in a branch office, have you? No. Okay. In any event, let me take you, you'll see there the guidelines are, but in particular uh, to page 9. Ringtail 84, question 14. When should elders interview a young child who is a victim of child abuse? Uh, that's the question put, as it were, to the service desk. And as I read the document, this is what the direction to the service desk is. When elders call the branch office regarding a child abuse matter, they may ask about the need to interview the victim. In such cases, help the elders to balance the need to investigate the dangers of inadvertently further traumatizing a young child abuse victim. For example, has the accused already confessed to the wrongdoing? Is there more than one accuser and thereby already sufficient evidence to handle the matter judicially? In such cases, there is likely no need to interview mm. the young child. Um, still nothing there uh, about being able to get uh, a trained professional to do the interview or to assist. No, that's why I said generally it's after that we encourage them if need be. But if they do want support during the meeting, then either the parents or somebody else that they feel comfortable with. Um, yeah. Now, returning to the direction in um, Shepherd the Flock that we were looking at earlier, which says that observers should not be present for moral support. Mm. Uh, can you conceive of what the justification can be for that direction? For moral support? Yeah, that an observer should not be present for moral support? Uh, no, I can't. And that's why I thought in other chapters of the book, but I just can't recall them. Um, I thought that one was in chapter 12 that I just quoted, but it's not 18 and 19. But I find that, well, I don't find, but with the letters that we have in the publications, we certainly do uh, try to make the person feel at ease uh, so they feel free to be able to express themselves. Um, because so long as that rule the, the, is... The, pro the problem, um, it, it, Mr Jackson, is really not addressed in that way, though, is it? The, the problem is no. the whole structure yes. of the arrangement with two male elders a male accused, um, and then a female in an environment in which she could never feel comfortable being asked to tell intimate details of a sexual, of a sexual nature. The structure doesn't yes. work, does it? Well, I agree, uh, Your Honour, I certainly do. What, what, what can the church then do about changing the structure? Well, maybe after hearings like this, 
uh, where it's been brought to the fore, I just feel that over a period of time, only through matters of letters and that I've read, that it does indicate that other persons for support are able to help them through. But even support's not going to help, given the structure of the yeah, whole arrangement. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, maybe, as I said, after meetings like this, uh, hearings like this, sorry, uh, there could be a structure change. I, you know, I, I'm not in that position to say, but it could be. Well, uh, how, how would structure change occur? Well, I guess just what you're saying, the with the individual... If, how, how would it be initiated inside the church? How does the church make the changes that are necessary? Oh, well, it would go through the governing body, or suggestions would be to the governing body, and then... Which is in America, is it? Yeah, but in turn it could go through the branch here with suggestions. And do people like you take forward suggestions to the branch here? Uh, well, I haven't. Uh, do they? I mean, is that, is that, I, yes, I they do. I how the system works. Yeah, sure, what, they do. What's the process? Yeah, no, they do. They make uh, recommendations, and these recommendations uh, go to the branch of the governing body, and then uh, situations can change in those areas. If if the governing body decides to to do that. But we can make anyone who's free to write and make these recommendations, Your Honour. Now, Mr Jackson, in your statement, you, you say that the complaint that was made when you were there investigating it, the complaint that was made involved ECB discovering Bill Neal looking at her as she was taking a shower, which Neal admitted to, you recall that, and uh, BCB complained that Neil had touched her breasts from the outside of the night clothing when kissing her good night, but he said that if that had occurred it was inadvertent. Do you remember that? Um, I just remember the uh, Bill Neal looking at her in the shower and the comment made on the touching of the breasts. You don't remember the complaint about uh, repeated tongue kissing over a period of time? No. You don't remember that? No. And to me, I don't know if it was even raised. Let me look at tab 70. scroll down so Mr Jackson you can see this do you recognise that this is your report to the branch following your investigation with Mr Hawley oh, yes yes now I understand you wrote this letter is that right I did yes with comments from brother Hawley or Max Hawley and if we see at the end both you and Mr Hawley signed it Yes, correct. Now, did you write this letter from any notes you had taken during the course of your interviews or investigations? I would have taken, uh, yes, and some of those notes, but also discussing it with uh, Max Hall as well, what so, the contents of the letter. So you took notes during the interviews? As to what I think we mean? both did. As far as I can remember, I think we both took some notes. As to what the complaints were yeah. and presumably what the responses were. Correct. Yeah. And where are those notes now? Uh, well, I, I don't have them. Um, I don't know whether they were kept in the congregation file or... Well, you were the circuit overseer at that time. Uh, would your notes have ordinarily gone into the congregation file? Normally, if I was serving that congregation, would have gone there. Um, uh, the only letter would have been this to the branch. Um, 
but I, I really can't remember. I know I never took notes, not only from this situation, but any um, anything else that I dealt with that went to the congregation. Sometimes there may be matters that I passed on. If I another circuit overseer uh, followed me or uh, took over the circuit that I was doing, but I cannot remember with regards to that, and I would say that possibly it was just left with the congregation. Commission uh, subpoenaed and received documents from the congregation files, but there are no notes there. Yeah, can well, you, you explain that? I cannot, no. Is it really, are you saying, Mr. Jackson, that your ordinary practice was that the uh, overseer's notes would go into the congregation file? Yes, and information as this letter would go to the branch. Uh, I don't think anything went to the branch other than that letter. Now, you see in this letter on, on the first page, where you, you report to the branch, you say we're writing in reply to another letter, and uh, you say, I investigated the matter further with the other elder, and then you set out some aspects of the investigation in the first paragraph. And then in the second paragraph, you say, we also spoke to other brothers and sisters in the congregation who knew about the matter through another sister who had spread the story after being told about it. And uh, you go on dealing with that about other people knowing. And then if we go to the next paragraph, you say that after interviewing the brothers and sisters and reviewing the scriptures, and you identify them, we felt that uncleanness had been committed on several occasions, but it was not loose conduct. And uh, we felt that Brother Neil could not speak with confidence, um, and so on. You see, you, you don't identify in that letter at all what the actual allegations were. Well, that's true, yes. In hindsight, I'd say that uh, uh, we should have done that, and we, yeah. You see, both... Um, Mr. Hawley and BCB uh, say that there were also allegations made with regard to uh, tongue kissing uh, in the meeting that, that you were at. And I take it you, you don't contest that, you just say you don't remember it. I don't remember it. I didn't think it was, but I don't remember. And so what was the uncleanness? that you identify in that letter? Well, the matter of the um, Bill Neal watching her in the shower and uh, the touching of the breast. Now, this report to the branch, is, is that a, a requirement that you report to the branch when uh, an elder is uh, removed or deleted from being an elder? Yes, yes because the appointments back then came through uh, the branch. The appointments of elders. And recommendation deletions, yes. And that's still the case, though, isn't it? Uh, uh, yes, it is. Yes. Yeah. And you say there that unfortunately there may be worldly people who also know, but we are not sure. In respect of people knowing, why is it that you drew the distinction between worldly people and people within the congregation? What's the relevance of that? It was mainly just to show how far it had got and therefore his qualifications, how far the, the information ha about Bill Neal uh, had got, not just in the congregation but was outside, and therefore his qualifications came into question because of that and because of one's in the congregation and because of what actually happened. And was the disqualification because he couldn't be trusted with young girls? Um, well, in this particular case, yes. Uh, well, that isn't what you say in the letter. The disqualification is, is that uh, he couldn't speak for you. He didn't have freedom oh, of speech. Well, sorry, yes. Well, that's different, isn't it? Yes. You were concerned that 
he couldn't speak uh, with authority in the congregation because of how people in the congregation might view him. Yes, yes. Yeah. So the wording, you know, again, uh, would be something that we, I would consider different. Mr. Jackson, uh, <clears throat> the letter refers to you feeling that uncleanness had been committed, but not loose conduct. Now, what's the difference? Uncleanness in the sense of what they actually did, or he did, I should say. Uh, Loose conduct it's, is where it's actual intercourse, um, uh, other inappropriate things that, that could happen. So that's referred to as loose conduct? Well, also in the Bible as immorality, pornea. Um, where does the expression loose conduct come from? Is that a Jehovah's Witness expression? Oh, no, I know. Just in that reference material, um, yeah, I'm not sure if it's in there, but I, I would say that it's an expression that uh, is mentioned in the Bible. Just offhand, I can't remember the scripture, but also to the publications have explained it and even going into more detail in later uh, Publications, just explaining it. If a man deliberately touched the breast of a girl, how would that be classified? Deliberately? Yes. Uh, I would say as uncleanness. Yeah. And if a man deliberately touched the breast of a girl on more than one occasion, how would that be described? Well, you, you're getting into the area of loose conduct. Well, in this letter you say that uncleanness have been committed on several occasions. See that? Yes. Now, one can understand an accident. But yes. It's different, isn't it, if you've got several occasions? Yes. Yes, that's why I say with the wording of it, I would probably word it as different. Well, if you've got several occasions... You're into the area of finding deliberate conduct, don't you? Mm. Mm. Well, does that suggest that the way you classified these events, even on your limited reference to them, was wrong? At the time, I would say that I felt that it was, or we felt that it was uh, correct, but I can also see what you're saying now. And also, too, with uh, you know, additional information that we've received over the years that uh, it certainly could be classified as different. We'll leave aside the different information over the years. Just looking back on what yes. you knew then, as you recall, yes. is the letter correct? Well, as I said, it's correct in the sense that we with our understanding there, but as you're saying, as I mentioned several occasions... Uh, then it would come under the, the field of loose conduct. Well, it's not my record. No, 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 it's no, your, no. It's your words. Yes, I know. Well, is the letter wrong? Well, I'd say the wording, yes. Yeah. Now, it might be suggested that the letter's been written in a way which is favourable to Brother Neil and more favourable than, in fact, the facts that you knew, knew meant it should have been? Uh, because of that comment or...? Yeah. Because of the finding. Yes, although we did, I did mention there, I just noticed in the last sentence, he's been given strong counsel and we feel that no further action or restrictions are needed. So what we actually discussed with him from the Bible or the publications, I'm not sure, I can't remember. But I can't see how we showed him particular favour. Well, I think we've agreed that the yes. facts that you had in, uh, fell into the category of loose conduct. Yes. But you didn't make that more serious finding. You'd left it an uncleanness. Yes. Isn't yes. that favourable to him? 
Well, in, again, looking at it, you could say yes, that uh, possibly is the case. Uh, but again, just the wording of it, would, I would have certainly done it different uh, in thinking about it now. Well, again, I might be suggested that you fell into this form of finding and form of words because you were favourably disposed to Brother Neil, you see. I don't think we, I was or we were, but by the wording of it, yes, I can see what you're saying, yeah, my Lord. You see, Mr Jackson, there was only one shower incident that was or looking over the shower incident that was complained of, wasn't there? I thought that was the situation, yes. But there were many instances over a long period of time of uh, tongue kissing. Well, I was unaware of that. I did not know. Because um, um, by using the word several occasions, it seems that this may be a reference actually to the several occasions of tongue kissing. Yes. Yes. Uh, I cannot say with confidence, uh, but it could have been. But I just cannot recall that that was uh, raised. Now, the, the classification of these different um, sins or severity of sinning uh, at that time was, as said, out in Pay Attention to Ourselves and to All the Flock. Is that right? That was published in 1991. Is that right? I think it was, yes. And that's... Um, at tab 80, perhaps we can look at ringtail 24, that's page 92 of the document. there under that heading, Uphold Jehovah's Righteousness, the second bold paragraph says, the scriptures clearly show that Jehovah forbids certain conduct among his clean people. Brothers need to uphold Jehovah's righteous standards regarding the following. And then it sets out various um, categories of transgression. You see that? The first is manslaughter. Yes. And then we'll scroll down. And then there's sexual misconduct including adultery, fornication, and other forms of pornea. And then under that, you'll see there are three yes. uh, subcategories. The first one, you just scroll up again slightly, is uncleanness. It includes an intentional momentary touching of sexual parts or caressing of breasts. Yes. And then if we scroll down... And then loose conduct is a shocking, flagrant disregard for Jehovah's moral standards. Yes. And some examples are set out. Yes. And then thirdly, pornea involves immoral use of the genitals of at least one human. Yes. And then it goes on and sets out examples. So that was the classification you were seeking to employ, is that right? Yes, yes. Do you know the origins, Mr. Jackson, of this word, pornea? Um, just scripturally, uh, from the Greek, deals with, uh, as it mentions there, uh, pornea involves immoral use of genitals, genitals of at least one human. Uh, so it involves... Uh, fornication uh, and other forms of uh, immorality. Also including there uh, oral sex, uh, anal sex and mutual masturb masturbation. So the word itself that you say is Greek origins? It's the Greek origin. Now, going back to your letter at tab 70. Uh, 
the top of the second page. Um, you'll see in the last sentence of that paragraph, you write, Also, brothers, I would recommend that once this has died down, and it appears that Brother Neil again has the freedom of speech, that he be recommended as an elder again, so that he can be of help in the congregation, as he has done in the past. Now, what does freedom of speech there mean to you as you employed it? Well, um, freedom of speech is just over a period of time if uh, those that knew about it no longer see it themselves as something that is uh, a terrible thing that disqualifies him as an elder. But looking at that now, um, I certainly would rewrite that area uh, because even now, uh, you know, one wouldn't be recommended without first of all considering the amount of time or years that that had happened, if at all, that he'd be recommended as an elder or ministerial servant. So you say that the time period should have to be considered? Now? Yes. Yes, and even then, it wasn't just something that was done within six months, but normally it would take a period of time. Uh, one of our publications said, uh, I think the wording... Uh, many years or and even back then it was recommended that it would be several years to live down that um, sin that had happened. Because it's a reputational issue. Yeah. It's about Brother Neil's efficacy or potential efficacy as an elder. Uh, yes, yes. And the moral authority that he might have in the congregation. Yes. And like even, that. yes, even too, taking into consideration um, that of dealing with the young people, would he be able to do that again? And, you know, with our recent letters that we've had, it certainly shows that uh, he wouldn't be quickly recommended, if ever. Uh, At the time that you considered what the proper course was in relation to BCB, uh, or BCB's complaints, there was no consideration then about his potential reoffending. Uh, no, not no. Well, shouldn't there have been? Uh, uh, you mean for him that we warned him? Well, no, not that you warned him. That oh, sorry. You, that you took steps to protect children in the congregation to ensure that he wouldn't offend against them. Oh yes, yes, yes. Um, I just can't recall what we said to him or what happened, uh, but we would have taken steps, um, yeah, that he, don't, that he wouldn't get into that situation again. Well, insofar as in being reappointed as an elder sometime in the future, your recorded concern here is about his reputation. Once this matter has died down, you accept that? Yeah, and as I say, in hindsight... I definitely wouldn't have said that back then. You're, what you didn't consider is whether, over a passage of time, he could be considered to be safe and trustworthy with children. Yes, yes. And that would certainly have been something now that I would definitely put in a letter. And, and you should have considered it then. Yes, yes, yes. Now, Mr Jackson, did you consider at all when those complaints were made that the conduct complained of may have amounted to a criminal offence? Uh, no, I did not, no. Did you consider at all reporting the matter to the police? Um, no, uh, I did not. Did you consider at all encouraging BCB to report the matter to the police? I am not sure if we recommended that to her. Um, as far as I'm aware, all we did was to have those meetings and to write that letter. If the branch wanted that further to happen, I guess they would have written to Max Hawley on it. Um, but I just cannot recall whether we did 
uh, talk to her about that or whether, um, yeah, I'm just not sure. In your considerable time and experience as an elder and as a uh, circuit and then district overseer, has there ever been a case where you have reported wrongdoing that may have constituted a criminal offence to the police? Uh, not that I'm aware because I never really got involved with uh, um, those cases at all. So you say you were never involved in a case where, within your responsibilities in the church, where the wrongdoing that was complained of was such that it may have constituted a criminal offence? Offhand, I, I cannot recall any situation. Other than the case of BCB, of course. Yes, yes. What is your understanding of when matters should be reported to the police by elders or overseers and when not? I think the procedure now is that we ring the branch and we tell the person and the legal department and we tell the one involved uh, about reporting it to the police. Um, I think every state has been different as regards to when this was implemented. I'm not sure. Um, but uh, that's what we've encouraged in the publications. But if there's no legal obligation to report, then the practice is to not report. Is that how you understand it? For sexual abuse, do you mean? For any crime. Oh, no, no, no. We, uh, we'd certainly recommend, if a crime has been committed, that it be reported to the police. Well, what about a, uh, a crime of sexual abuse? You seem to treat that differently. In you mean, first of all, ringing the branch and asking for... Well, whether it should be reported. I think we have direction that should be reported. If there's a legal obligation to yes, report. Yes, And if there's not a legal obligation to report. Well, again, if there's any doubts, we are still encouraged to ring the branch legal department just to seek direction from them and what to do. And you would do as you directed and, by them? Yeah, but, uh, yes, and well, not just one individual, but two individuals doing it. You mean the two elders? Yeah. yeah. Now, where do you, in your understanding, where do you expect that line to be drawn as to what is serious enough to be reported to the police and what isn't? In the matter of, of crime? Yes, that's what the police yeah. are principally concerned with, crime. Yeah. Well, apart from uh, child sexual abuse... Uh, areas of, uh, say, theft, um, murder, um, uh, yeah, general general crime where they're breaking the law. But in your, as I understand it, you say that you have never been involved in reporting a matter to the police? Uh, no, that's correct. Yeah. Those are my questions, John. Does anyone else have any questions? I do, Your Honour. Anyone else? Yes. Um, who should go first? Have you talked Pro about Probably my friend. I think so. Yes, does anyone else have any questions? No, Your Honour. Yes, well, Ms Gallagher, can you go first? Oh, I beg your pardon, Your Honour, I thought... Sorry. Um, just uh, in reference to tab 70, the letter that you wrote... Sorry, I beg your pardon, I, yeah. my name is Gallagher and I represent BCB. Yeah. Um, if you, tab 70 could be um, called up, please. Can you just clarify... Um, Mr. Jackson, the, the second paragraph there um, where you indicate 
Um, I investigated the matter <clears throat> further with the other elder in the uh, Narragi congregation, Brother Max Hawley. You indicate and spoke to the sister involved and her husband and also bro other brothers and sisters in the congregation. We gave counsel to both the husband and the wife about going to the elders and setting the matter straight with Jehovah. Could I clarify with you uh, who you are talking about when you say, first of all, uh, I spoke to the sister. Was that BCB? Is that who you're referring to? Um, so we're talking about the sister involved and her husband? Yes. Yeah, so is that BCB and BCC? Uh, I'd say so, yes. All right. And then when you talk about we gave counsel to both the husband and wife about going to the elders and setting the matter straight with Jehovah, who, which husband and wife are you talking about there? Are you talking about Mr and Mrs Neil or BCB and BCC? Um... I would say, uh, I was unsure she was married then, but I would say that it would be to uh, be CD and her husband. What did they have to set straight with Jehovah? Well, it wasn't that. I think it was keeping in mind that scriptural principle of James was really just going to the elders to try and get help from the elders because I think it had been spread um, now, I'm not saying by them, but by somebody, I can't remember who it was, where other people started to know about it. Was there an element then of her being chastised for spreading um, something that could no. um, affect the congregation? No. The reputation of Jehovah? No, even the word counsel. Again, I wouldn't use that word again. Uh, but you did, and you said... Yeah. Yeah. You've given evidence that you didn't keep any notes about conversations, yes. that's right, isn't it? Yes. So this is our best record, you agree yes. with that? Yes, And it's it's dated around the time, you know, obviously 1992, around yeah. the time that you yeah. uh, spoke with BCB and BCC. Yes. What do you think you might have meant then, um, if I could just, before leaving this topic, set, what do you mean by setting the matter straight with Jehovah? Well, just... Um, going to see what what is you know, how they could be helped or encouraged. Um, and you, you didn't mention going to the police for help and encouragement in reporting. No, no, that's correct. Yeah. <clears throat> you indicate further. Uh, the next sentence is uh, then showed that after we had done this, that if we repented, Jehovah would forgive us. An element there of these two, if it was a reference to BCC and BCB, that they were, the two of them actually, being chastised. Yes, I would say though that referring it to with, with uh, uh, BCD, um, it was more to Bill Neal than to her um, that he needed to turn around and change. Um, um, so <clears throat> you would deny that there was any element of, of her uh, BCB and BCC, her husband, in any way being chastised for telling others about um, this conduct? I don't think we would have chastised them, um, but we would have encouraged them to try and settle the matter within, you know, talking to um, the elder back there, who was Max Hawley, and try to do what we were doing here as two of us. Yes. If you go to the second page of tab 70, um, the top right hand reference is 0505. Um, could I just clarify, you note in the middle of that um, 
paragraph. Um, well, before I ask that question, this this paragraph really is very sympathetic to Mr. Neil or Brother Neil, isn't it? Ah, uh, yes. Indicating from the previous page that his um, his accepted counsel and his um, you were impressed by his humility throughout the ordeal. Yes. Yeah. Um, so he was treated, it seems, from this letter with, with kindness and sympathy, correct? Yes, yes, because we try to do that as well as to the guilty, uh, to help them, yeah. Um, you indicate that um, <clears throat> uh, in that paragraph, if I could take you to the sentence, now that it is all in the open and discipline has been applied and accepted, he feels much better about his relationship with Jehovah. Do you accept that everybody, including members of the Jehovah's Witness, is subject to the discipline of the state? Um, how do you mean, sorry? Well, the church had disciplined him. Yes. But um, do you accept that... And I think when being asked questions by counsel assisting your reference to several occasions on the previous page may indeed have been a reference to something you don't recall now, but the um, kissing with the tongue. Um, now, uh, several, of course, indicates that it was um, more, than, more, than, more than once, more than three times. Um, <coughs> it's hard to calculate how many. Do you agree with that proposition? Yes, yes. So that, um, as a child, this girl appears BCB, um, of course, she was a young woman when you interviewed her, but she appears to have been subject to several, um, multiple even, uh, indecent assaults. Do you agree with that proposition? Yes. Do yes. you understand what an indecent assault is? Well, um, from my recollection, I don't know what the law is, but I'd say that it deals with things such as uh, this type of thing that happened to yes, PCD. Is, sorry, an, an invasion of somebody's space, they're, in fact their their person, coupled with, yes. so that's the assault, coupled with yes. an act of indecency, yes. which would of course be the insertion of the tongue in the mouth. Mm. Mm. Now, do you understand, do you have an appreciation that uh, if this matter had been reported to the police, before um, this young one was confronted with her abuser, as, as occurred. Do you accept that, correct? Yes. Do you accept that um, if Mr Neil had been charged, or are you aware of this, that if he had been charged with multiple counts of accident, uh, indecent assault, just say, do you have an appreciation that he probably would have received bail to stay away from... BCB. At that time, no. Do you understand also that um, he would have had to stay away from her? Um, oh, sorry, I'll withdraw that. Um, he and anyone associated with him would have had to have yes. stayed away from her. Do you have an appreciation that that's what would have happened? Yes. If this matter had likely yes. happened? Yes. Yes, and our. Publications have certainly stressed that over these years. Um, Do you have an appreciation also that if the matter had gone to hearing, um, that um, BCB would not have had to face her accuser, sorry, I beg your pardon, her abuser even then? Because, um, if I might, sorry. there are facilities available for victims mm. of um, sexual, um, offense, uh, sexual assaults to give evidence from remote locations. Yes, that I do know now. Then, no, I do not know. Mm. Of course, so you'd agree, given that um, sort of the, the care with which the, the state deals with these sorts of allegations, that 
greater care should have been given by uh, members of the faith. Do you agree with that? Uh, In how you treated, I beg your pardon, how you treated yeah, sure. Yes. I, yes, I do believe that it's a situation. And I feel that, you know, we really did, while I was there for those six days, we did try to help her, encourage her. Um, Can I interject there? I beg your pardon. Yeah. You didn't, did you? You didn't encourage her to go to the police, did you? Well, that's true. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I didn't do that. But I'm saying that we still tried to help her. Mr Jackson, it's plain from her evidence that she was very severely affected by these events. you agree? I would say yes. It's also plain that the process that you engaged in inflicted further trauma on her. Do you understand that? I understand it, but at the time uh, I don't think I appreciated it to that degree. There's no reference in this letter or any concern for her or her welfare or what Jehovah's Witness might do to help her, is there? Uh, I thought there were some uh, publications that we quoted and scriptures that we would have used to help her in the letter, I thought. But it's clear that she needed psychiatric help. Well, we, if she felt that and we felt that, then we said, well, she would question us on it, we certainly would have recommended it. Did it occur to you at the time that she may need help from medical professionals? Uh, I'd say no. Well, you know now that she has done and does need it. Is Jehovah's Witness prepared to help her to receive it? I would say uh, they certainly would. Yeah, they would be conscious of spending time with her. And they would also recommend her uh, seeking uh, medical help. Would they be prepared to pay for it? Uh, well, I don't think I could answer that question. Why not? You'd, well, you'd have to, they'd have to write to the branch of the governing body just to seek out that. It's not an automatic matter, is it? If someone's damaged no. by the actions of an elder? Not that I'm church. aware of, no, sorry. Do you think that the church should provide funds to help her with her medical care? Well, I guess it would be something for them to consider, but... Now, what about you? Do you think the church should? Um, well, I think we give a lot of assistance uh, to them. I think it's an area that I really haven't thought about and would like to say. I think financial assistance is a big thing that maybe, you know, they could be thinking about, but I wouldn't make that uh, statement that they would do it or wouldn't do it. Uh, what would you recommend if you were asked your opinion as to whether they should give her financial support for medical care? I think it could be considered. Yes. Yes, thank you. Thank you. Uh, Mr Jackson, I just want to clarify... You need to identify yourself because there's people watching this on the screen. Oh, certainly. My name is Coyne. Um, and you appear for... And I appear for you, amongst others. So, Ms Gallagher was just asking you questions about tab 70, which was your letter. Um, and particularly, if that could be brought up again, please... <clears throat> Um, at paragraph 2, you're asked in relation to uh, where you have written, we gave counsel to both the husband and wife about going to the elders and setting the matter straight with Jehovah. You're asked whether that referred to BCB and BCC being her husband or referred to the Neils, correct? Yes. Where it, after you've said that, it quotes James 5, 13 to 15. Is that in relation to what you've just said before that? Yes, it encourages um, ones who have been damaged in some way just to go and try and talk to the elders so the elders can help them and encourage them. Okay, thank you. Yesterday you were asked questions about 
how BCB would have been aware of the process of how complaints were dealt with. Correct? Yes. Um, when a member of the congregation is approaching baptism, are they given a book to study? Uh, yes, it's uh, uh, entitled Organised uh, for the Ministry, I think. And that book contains various questions relating to the baptism. Yes. And that is a book that those people are expected to be conversant with. Yes. And that is a book that they are expected to also consult throughout their lives in relation to matters relating to their faith. Correct, yes. If we could bring up tab 109, please. <coughs> that as, is that the book? Yeah, it's organised to do Jehovah's Will. And that is the book that uh, people get when they're approaching yes. baptism. If we go to Ringtail 88, please. And you see that heading, Handling Cases of Serious Wrongdoing. Yes. So... This is something that would be contained in the book that each and every Jehovah's Witness should have when they're approaching baptism. That's correct. And should be aware of. Should be, yes. Okay. Now, moving on from that document, um, you also asked yesterday various questions about the procedures uh, by which investigation took place. And you were shown various sections from the uh, Book of Elders. Correct. And one of your responses was that you would refer to the Book of Elders, but you would also look to um, letters and publications, correct? Correct. And you've said that again today. If we could go to tab 124, please. might have to, s can we make that smaller so that you can see more of it? Yes. Okay, is, is that one of the letters to which you refer? It is, yes. And that one is dated October the 1st, 2012? Correct. It's addressed to all bodies of elders? Yes. And it, it says there in the first paragraph that it replaces... Sorry. The letter updates the letters to all bodies of elders regarding child abuse dated August the 1st, 1995, March the 14th, 1997, July the 20th, 1998, April the 1st, 2004, and June the 5th, 2006, and May the 24th, 2010. Correct? Yes, correct. And it also asks that all those previous letters be removed from the con yes. congregational permanent file. So this, as of the 1st of October 2012, really was the document that you would refer to for matters after that date. Is that right? Correct, yes. And the contents of that letter related to legal concerns regarding accusations of child abuse? You have yes. a verbal answer. yes. Congregational concerns regarding accu accusations of child sexual abuse. Um, That's the second point under the table of contents. Right at the top. Yes. I'm sorry, it's right at the top of the document. See that? Yes, congregational concerns regarding accusations of child sexual abuse, yes. Helping victims of child sexual abuse. Yes and restrictions and privileges. Yes. So is that when you were talking about referring to letters? That's that correct. This document amongst others? Yes. 
you spoke about also refer referring to publications. Um, when you say that, were you referring to articles that would have appeared in the Watchtower and the Awake magazine? Yes. Uh, there have been articles really as way back in 1970, uh, in the 80s, in the 90s, and in 2000. When you say articles, you mean articles relating to child sexual abuse? Yes, yes. Are those publications available to everyone within the congregation? Yes. Yes. Nothing further. Yes, Mr So this is the organised to do Jehovah's Will document you referred to. Uh, correct. Now, the your involvement uh, with BCB's case was in 1992, right? Yes. Go to page two of 109. You'll see this document came into effect in 2005. Correct. I take it you then wouldn't have expected BCB to have had this document in 1991-92. No, but we did have a document <laughs> prior to that. What is that? Um, I think it was entitled Organised for the Ministry or to do the Ministry. You don't know offhand just what that said about the processes? I can't remember. I can't remember the release or just what it says. The release date, I should say. Thank you, Your Honour. <coughs> yes, thank you, Mr Jackson. You are excused. Thank you very much. Next witness will be Mr Bellow. Would this be a convenient time, Your Honour? All right, we'll take the morning adjournment. All stand.